welcome to Nyaya Speaks. Today, we are talking to Devika Deshmukh Doshi, who is an alumnus of Government Law College, having completed her BLS LLB and thereafter pursuing her Master's in Law from the prestigious London School of Economics and Political Science. Devika is practicing as a counsel in the Bombay High Court and also the Family Court at Bangalore. Devika was also a guest lecturer at Government Law College, teaching the law relating to women and children. Devika, it's great to have you today. Hi, hi, thank you. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and I'm, I'm so excited to talk at this lovely legal initiative that you all have of empowering people with the knowledge, uh, especially the legal knowledge, which is absolutely the need of the day. So very glad to be on board. Is online violence considered to be an actual form of violence punishable under the law? Oh, absolutely. Um, in fact, as you rightly said, you know, since internet has become increasingly such an important part of our lives and social media where we get to keep in touch with, uh, you know, our friends and family and also express one's views and opinions, which may not be agreeable to everybody. Um, this has also given a a rise to sort of uh, gender inequalities, which have always existed in society, as you know, but there has been an overt expression of that now in, uh, in, the, in the form of social media and in the form of online abuse. Uh, online abuse, in fact, is something that is a very serious thing which we need to take cognizance of because it can be very pervasive and it can be very, very severe and uh, the effects that it has on psychological effects rather are innumerable and that cannot be just brushed aside and ignored and as far as the law is concerned yes the law does need to develop a little bit more with the advent of technology but it is certainly punishable under the laws there are several laws which do deal with specific instances of online abuse um, whether it be the Information Technology Act or the Indian Penal Code or the Indecent Representation of Women. Or, there are many laws in place. Uh, there is a lacuna in certain evolving forms of online abuse. And um, so definitely the need of the hour is to take this very seriously, to know that this will have serious legal consequences and to educate the people about the effects and the harmful consequences of online abuse, especially of women. So um, can you discuss some common forms of online violence that women face? Specifically, how do you report these and what happens when you report? Right. So um, to make this discussion easier, I will first tell you the different forms of the very basic different forms of online violence that are there and then move on to how one can report it and you know bring it to the notice of the authority because many a times it's all overlapping so it would be you know it would be uh, applicable to all of them uh, the most common umbrella term in terms of uh, online violence is cyberbullying uh, we all we all know what bullying is we've probably experienced it growing up in schools and colleges and now with the online space it's all come online only thing what happens is that now under the clutches of anonymity of you know not revealing my identity and um, not having a person to see that I am the bully I have that much more of strength and power to intimidate or to threaten somebody on the online space um, intimidation or threats could be of physical or sexual violence it could be hurtful embarrassing content that is put up it could be really private images or private moments that are captured and you know um, sort of uh, circulated without the consent of the person in order to intimidate and harass such a person so cyberbullying in within itself has many sub you know online abuse points such as stalking and sexual harassment and so on and so forth and cyberbullying in itself uh, is definitely punishable in the law. You have the provisions of the IPC. You have the provisions, you know, which which make it punishable, which make which uh, 
bring about a jail term and fine for intimidation. Intimidation made anonymously is also fined. And you can also go under Section 499 of the IPC, which deals with defamation. If the content that is put is fake or is defamatory in nature, that is certainly also another avenue or another provision of the law that you have which would protect you. Um, as I said, other than cyber bullying, there is also cyber stalking. And just like cyber stalking, now we have had a, an amendment in the legislature to bring about a sort of uh, amendment to the very archaic laws of uh, criminal laws where stalking has also been recognized as a serious criminal offense. And uh, cyber stalking, just like offline stalking, would constitute, you know, constant monitoring of a woman, uh, making advances despite the fact that she has refused to entertain you. It could be tracing the location and uh, various other such forms in which you can bring about a serious fear, a serious hyper vigilance, a serious form of anxiety. Because as I said, you know, now it is it you are behind the garb of a computer where you know you don't know what personal information and what could possibly what possible information could be spread. So cyber stalking is also dealt with uh, the IPC under Section three hundred and fifty four D, and which talks about um, monitoring the use by a woman of the internet, email, or any other form of electronical communication. So um, cyber, cyber stalking is another form of online violence. And with cyber stalking could also come certain uh, sexual harassment, could also come instances of revenge porn. Now, uh, sexual harassment, as we know, we have the act in place for sexual harassment at the workplace. But what happens in an instance where it is happening to you online? where a person is uh, trying to show you pornography, is trying to make sexually colored remarks, or um, if you're getting vulgar SMSs and you know unsolicited photos and whatnot. So that too is now punishable under the law. That too is covered by the IPC specifically under sec the new amendment, which is section 354A, which makes it punishable. Uh, along with sexual harassment comes voyeurism, where there is sexual interest shown in um, very private, intimate moments that a person has, could be undressing, could be, you know, intimate moments that you have with your partner. And um, those two are dealt strictly under the law. Um, speaking of voyeurism, and as I just mentioned earlier, revenge porn which is something that we have come across in our matrimonial matters as well. Uh, revenge porn is a very um, misleading term actually, because it necessarily says that it has, there has to be revenge or a vendetta, which may not necessarily be so. Sometimes it could be just to, you know, humiliate or harass a person or, or just, you know, just for the kicks of it, as they say. And uh, pornography is not with the intent to entice the other person. It is just a very private moment that has been captured, but has unauthorizedly been spread, disseminated without your consent. So I may have consented to those private intimate moments being captured on camera or on video, but I have not given you the authority to spread it and to disseminate that information, thereby putting me in a very... Um, vulnerable position of being attacked, of being, you know, judged of, of my private information being out there. So that is also a, a serious concern. It is um, very much we see in, you know, uh, love triangles or uh, love equations gone completely wrong, where we see there's a bit of uh, this that comes about. And uh, revenge porn is also not directly uh, protected by the law, but yes, there are various provisions in the law to protect it. The unfortunate part is that if the original perpetrator of the revenge porn is, you know, arrested or is taken into custody and you stop him or, you know, prevent him from further spread of the information, the only thing that we don't have control of, which 
again we need to now work upon and build upon is the downstream distribution that happens you see whatsapp has connected us to a such a great degree that i will get a forward i'll forward it to my groups who will in turn forward it to their groups and for us it may just be a laugh or it may just be oh this is interesting but we don't realize the consequences the emotional turmoil the psychologically disturbed state that that person may be in so i think it is uh, important for us also to be responsible in terms of what we receive as information or what we feel is important enough to you know spread to the general uh, public at large another form of online abuse which is not considered to be a very serious form would be trolling trolling is something that we've all come across uh, you know when we're on twitter or we're on any other social media platform and it's basically to sow a seed of discord you know in people just to entice people to bring about inflammatory extraneous things may not be connected with the discussion at hand and uh, it is a sort of a deliberate provocation of another person and uh, while strolling would be punishable under the law it would have to be a really serious troll which has caused a serious threat or a th serious intimidation for the law to take take its own course and for it to be taken seriously and another uh, interesting aspect of online abuse which is very recent and which is something that you had also asked me to focus upon is doxing um and doxing actually comes from the term you know the documents you know getting the documents and this is where we put so much of our information on the world wide web we give away our uh names addresses uh, you know bank account details everything on social media and it is all we leave a digital footprint wherever we go um and clearly the fact that we leave that digital footprint means that it can be taken advantage of and that's exactly what is done where hackers or uh, you know impersonators want to take all of that information and use it against you and uh, you know publicly give out that information which may not be in your best interest unfortunately doxing is a term that is not recognized in the law doxing is a term which is not covered or punishable under the law and uh, there is a need of the hour again as i said to understand these to sensitize the various authorities to bring about and uh, you know to collate the evidence and to realize the importance of this online abuse and the far reaching consequences that it has on the victims of online abuse so these are just a few of the instances there are so many as i said there are so many terms which i still have to comprehend like the zoom bombing and astro turfing and what not but at the end of the day it is uh, very important for us to uh, educate ourselves and take this a little bit more seriously how important is it to collect evidence while reporting a case of online violence either to the cyber cell or any other complaint portal and specifically what kind of evidence should one be collecting for such complaints correct um also that would take me to the various places where you can report these crimes uh collecting evidence is absolutely important and absolutely essential in this case what tends to happen is that if you are a victim of cyber bullying or of cyber stalking or online sexual harassment or revenge porn or any of the things you are so disturbed by the information your first thought process is not to ensure that the perpetrator is behind bars is just to protect your self esteem your self confidence and your immediate instinctive reaction is i want to delete it i want to get out of this i want to shut my laptop never get back online thereby disempowering yourself and just try and move on but uh, as difficult as those moments may be it is extremely crucial to uh, collect that ev evidence and to save that evidence and get every possible evidence that you can because it's all digital evidence right it can it's very possible to lose that evidence so whether it means saving it whether it means taking printouts and screenshots and keeping it handy 
it would be of extreme importance. Uh, number one, because if you have, if it has happened on social media, all the social medias have a setting of reporting the abuse. I mean, I have personally gone through the the tags on Instagram where they talk about you know different levels of uh, abuse that you want to report. Whether is it hacking? Is it impersonation? Is it you know any exposed private information? All of that. So for in order to substantiate your claim, you would need to provide the relevant evidence. Similarly, in the cyber cells, which uh, you know there's a national crime reporting portal, and you have a cyber cell for each crime division, where you can file your complaint, and um, which which or you can go to the police station or you can also go to the National Commission for Women, where you can make all of these complaints. And when you always substantiate it with evidence, as in a court of law, your case becomes stronger if it is substantiated by evidence, it would definitely um, be a very important uh, part in trying to nab the perpetrator and uh, bring him to justice. So it's of, of crucial importance to save the evidence and to collate whatever evidence that you can by doing your own research. What is your advice on best practices on the use of social media? Uh, well, there are so many. One of the main ones is to realize that you're leaving a digital footprint everywhere. So uh, one of my very dear friends and a very well-renowned social media lawyer in South Africa, Emma Sadler, uh, she, had, she has put up this billboard test. If you don't want any of your private information to be put on the main street on a big billboard with your name, phone number, photo, all of that, do not put it on social media. So that should be your first instinctive reaction. Do I want the world at large to know this information? If you are engaging in any private tax, is it necessary to upload it on the World Wide Web? Because once it's there, it's lost. And it's very difficult to sort of, you know, retrieve that information or delete it. Um, so number one, to be very mindful of what you're posting on the internet. Uh, secondly, is to uh, have different passwords and change your passwords for all various, uh, you know, media sites or internet that you're using. The third would be to go in, which I personally find very, very inconvenient, but the two step authentication and verification, which is required, which uh, is time consuming, but it is extremely important. Um, it would also be important to uh, educate yourselves as to the safeguards that you can possibly take in keeping yourself, you know, um, secure and safe online. And uh, to, to report, not be a bystander to dissemination of this sort of information. And if required, uh, you know, report it. The crime cells allow you to report information for a third party. And, uh, you know, you can make an anonymous complaint as well if you think that it is in the interest of the person who's being uh, bullied or being stalked as the case may be. So that is also a very, very important thing that you can take. And um, generally, I just wish that the, the various authorities, like the police authorities and the other authorities are more sensitized to how important online abuse is and the fact that they get some digital literacy training in how to collate the evidence, how to protect the evidence so that it can be used in a court of law. Thanks for watching the video. Join us next time for more of India's Laws Explained.